Hi, welcome to uh, this video. I want to talk today about manipulating form properties. Uh, in the previous video, 12-1, Introduction to Windows Form Programming, I showed you how to create a simple form. Uh, let's take a look at that right now. All right, so we had a little a form, a window, right? And uh, you can move the form around. I showed you how to create the form, how to, uh, you know, and the power that it gave you, and how to navigate the inheritance hierarchy so that you can see all the different classes that go into, you know, making a form, all right? So you get a lot of functionality right out of the, uh, out of the box when you create a, a window with, a, with the form class, all right? Uh, today I'd like to show you how you can actually manipulate the form properties. The form properties that, that I showed you how to use uh, in the previous lecture included the bounds property. And we were, um, wrote a little program that printed the bounds to the console or that wrote the bounds to the console when you move the window around and change the, change the dimensions of the window so that you could see the window bounds um, and how they dynamically changed when you manipulated the size of the window. Okay, uh, but today well, I'm going to talk a few more different properties and show you how to look up properties and then show you how to set various different properties on the form. Some of the properties we're going to talk about today uh, include the back color property, uh, background image, okay, and the, the title bar. Okay, so uh, the title bar has a text property. Well, the form has a text property. You know, most controls have a, a text property, not all, okay? But when you're talking GUI components, right, you can set the text on uh, a window, right, a form. You can set the text on a text box. You can set the text on a button. So the property to set a title bar, um, I, I remember when I first started to learn .NET, it wasn't very intuitive. So you have to kind of look up the properties in the documentation Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the documentation for the form class, and just explore. Now, if you're if you're starting out with .NET and uh, you haven't got into a habit of just going to the uh, .NET documentation for the API, right, that you're using, then uh, that's a good habit to get into. In fact, it's when I teach these classes. Uh, I usually make it an assignment in the first couple weeks of the course to, you know, for my students to go and just dive into the documentation. So when you're on the documentation page for the form class, uh, the last lecture I talked about the inheritance hierarchy. Um, and while I'm here, I might as well just talk about the syntax. So the syntax uh, comes in helpful if you want to figure out, you know, how the the uh, form is um, or how the control that you're interested in is declared right and a lot of times that that helps you figure out like you know how, how to use it okay so in the inheritance hierarchy we see the objects or the classes the classes that the form inherits from okay but um, for other controls and not necessarily the form we would see uh, if there's any interfaces that it implements right and the syntax would show you the in interfaces that a control implements in this case form simply inherits container control or extends container control uh, and then container control obviously extends scrollable control so uh, and then you've got com visible app attribute is true and class interface attribute auto dispatch these are attributes up here okay for that particular class now in the constructor section you've got form there's only one way to create a form and it's got a no argument constructor and then the next section is properties, right? So if we just browse the properties, um, you can see that there's all kinds of different properties and they go on and on and on, right? Some properties you'll use all the time, some properties you probably would never use, okay? But the ones we're interested in today are the back color, background image, okay, and the text. We scroll down to the text property, right? And there's the text property. And it tells you, if you look at a property, so for example, we've got text here, and you go over to uh, the right over here, right, in this other column, far right column, you'll see my halo when I click, uh, it overrides the control.text. So it'll tell you in the right-hand column, 
from what class in the inheritance hierarchy this property derives. And in this case, the control class implements uh, or provides a text property. So every control has a text property, okay? Uh, but because the window form, you know, is going to set the text property for the title bar, there's a little bit different behavior for a form um, and each subcontrol would have a little different behavior. So text sets a, you know, for a text box, you're setting the contents of the text box. For a label, you're setting the content, the, the content of the label. For a button, you're setting the buttons label, right? The button text. So each of these, each control in, for the most part would more than likely override, uh, the controls text property. Okay. Back color. Now, a lot of times you want to go exploring these properties because in order to use a property, you have to use it in conjunction with perhaps another class or, or another enumeration. So let's go up to back color. I'll give you an example. All right, so in the back color property, we'll click on back color. And it'll pull up the back color documentation. Okay, so... Um, if we look at the syntax, and this is where the syntax section comes in really handy, we see that the back color property is defined as public override color. So there's the type color, and the property name is back color, and it's a it's a read write property because it's got a get and set. But the property value, the type is system drawing color. So if we want to set the color of the background we have to use the colors as are defined in the system.drawing.color class, okay? Or structure in this case, color is a structure. So the color structure. And the color has a whole bunch of constants, okay? Static properties, I should say, in this particular case, constants, right? So we've got Alice blue, um, antique white. There's all kinds of colors we can set okay for if, if we ever need to use a color so system dot drawing namespace that's that's important to remember when we start writing this program okay now uh, the next uh, property we'll talk about in this lecture will be the background image property so let's go take a look at the background image property uh, generally speaking uh, we're going to set the background image. Use, I'm going to use a JPEG, okay, but if you need to figure out what type of images can be set, okay, the property is an image, okay, or the type of the property is an image, right? Background image is the property name. It's a read-write property, um, and it takes a system.drawing.image type. So in order to figure out how to use an image, you need to go look at the system.drawing.image, okay? It's a class, all right? And then we come down here and we've got properties on that particular class, right? So let's see, all right. Property got flag, height, so we can do all kinds of stuff with an image, all right? Clone, dispose, all right? Now there's another uh, type that we'll have to use in conjunction with this, right? And it'll be the bitmap. So let's take a look at the bitmap. All right, now there's a constructor for a bitmap. So we can create a bitmap with an image, all right? Or image and, you know, we got all kinds of different constructors here. But we can also pass in a string, okay? So initializes a new instance of bitmap if we use the, the string version of bitmap constructor, okay? Uh, you know, this is when you have to explore, like, for your particular situation, when you might use a bitmap, you know, and create it from an image or using, uh, you know, three different integer values in pixel format, okay? Or using a graphics object. But uh, we have to take a look at the string class or the bitmap string constructor to get particular details on you know what the string is expecting right so we see here that 
uh, it is going to throw an exception if we don't if we have a file not found. So in other words, if you try to create a, a bitmap in order to create an image and you give it the, the, the string of the image, the string in this case will be the path. Okay? And you, generally speaking, sometimes there's usage notes, all right, for these classes. In this case, there there isn't one, all right. But if you're providing a, a file name, then that's usually going to determine, that usually denotes that uh, you can provide a fully qualified path, right? Well, if you're providing the path to something and that file is not there and it tries to load or create the class without that file being there, then you're going to throw an exception and the exception is file not found. So it's important to use the documentation. This is one of the, I would say this is one of the primary barriers to entry for a lot of folks who are learning how to use or learning how to program um, is you're just trying to wrap your head around the API to figure out everything that's done for you, right? So all you want to do is create an image uh, or set the properties on on a form, right? Well, if you, you know, you go to the image class and the image class, you know, it, you just can't create an image unless you understand the bitmap and you can't set the background color unless you understand the color. Uh, you know, structure, right? So one thing leads to another. And I guess that's the golden rule of learning how to program any uh, of these complex languages like c .net or Java, right? They have big APIs that you have to go explore. So this is always a good drill, right, to go explore these things. Let's return to the text and, uh, and take a look at the program uh, that I call the form properties demo, okay? Uh, and I'll go ahead and type this in in uh, uh, Notepad++ and compile it and run it. And then we can play around with the properties and, and, and see the effects that it has. Okay. Now, uh, in this particular example, I'm going to use three different namespaces. Okay, Using the system and system.windows.forms and system.drawing. Uh, and just as a review, if the using, it doesn't include anything, right? It's not like C++ or, or C, okay? Using simply provides shortcut naming. So if I say using system, that means I can, you know, say console.writeline without saying system.console.writeline. Same goes for system.windows.forms. If I say using system.windows.forms namespace, then I can say, you know, I can declare a form and extend the form class without saying system.windows.forms.form. In other words, I don't have to use the fully qualified name of the class if I've said using that namespace up here. All right. Then, uh, so I, I create a, a new class called form properties demo. And in this class is one big main method. Okay. And in my programs, I like to um, denote the end of the main method or any big method that I've used using, you know, a comment. So the end of the main is this brace right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, then the first thing I do in the main, well, the main method version that I'm using is going to take an argument, okay, from the command line. And so I'll give you a little sketch of the algorithm. Uh, you can create a an instance of form properties demo which is going to bring up a window and if you've typed in the name of a file for the image it will try to load that file so it creates an instance of the form and then if the args right this is the arguments parameter if the args which is an array of strings if the array is greater than zero if it's got one or more strings in there then I put in a try catch now the reason I use a try catch block is because if I try to create this bitmap using a string that represents a file name and it's not there, it's going to throw an exception and I need to catch that exception. So generally speaking, you, you create an image by creating a bitmap, right? So I'm going to create a bitmap. I'm going to cre create an instance of a bitmap. The bitmap constructor returns an image, okay? In fact, let's go back to the documentation and take a look at that just so uh, we can be clear on what's happening. Here's the bitmap. Okay. That's the, uh, let me go down here to the bitmap constructor. Namespace, system.drawing. All right. File name. 
It says, initializes a new instance of the bitmap class from the specified file. File name string is the bitmap file name and path. Throws the file not found. So the name, the file name and path, okay, remarks. The remark section is great too, right? Because it kind of gives you some notes on how to use it. The file name and path can be relative to the application or an absolute path. Uh, use this constructor to open images with the following file format. So you can use BMP, GIF, EXIF, EXIF, JPEG, PNG, PNG and TIFF. And for more information about supported format, see types of bitmaps. Okay. Then the file remains locked until the bitmap is disposed. So that's important too. If you wanted to open up that same file in another application and modify it, it would, you know, you'd get a conflict there, right? <clears throat> Okie dokie. Now, let's go back to the code. All right, so here's my uh, simple form window. Let's pull up Notepad++. Yeah, I'm going to close that program. Um, but before I do that, let's return to the text just briefly to figure out what else is going on here. So, so uh, once I've got my image, if this line of code executes, line 10, if that line of code executes fine and doesn't throw an exception, then my image is created. And then I can take that image, right? And I can set the background image of my um, FPD reference, okay, form properties demo, which is a form. Now I can set the size of the, f of the window that's another property that I'm using here to the image size. So now I'm going to adjust the window to be the same size as the image. Now in this particular case, if I have an exception, then I'm going to ignore it. Okay. If I, and it's, so it's just going to fail quietly, right? If I don't, if I can't create the, the, um, the, the if I don't find the file for the image okay in this in this particular case a lot of cases ignoring exceptions uh you know it, it might look like bad style right in some cases ignoring an exception is a good idea and in, but i'd say probably in the majority of cases you want to really make sure that you're handling the exception but in this simple program i'm ignoring it okay now if the args length is less than zero or equal to zero right in other words there's no arguments then i'm just going to set the background color to black okay and the way that I do that is I go FPD dot back color which is the property for that form equals color dot black and that color is that structure and black is one of those constant properties all right then the next thing I do is I set the text property this sets the title of the form and the name of the title will be form properties demo and then finally I say application.run and if you watch the previous lecture 12-1 then the application class has that static run method which then kicks off the event queue for the form. All right so let's type this code in. <clears throat> Let me slide this out of the way so I can reference it. Now the first thing I do like I usually say in most of my videos is I'm going to save my um, source file, right? There's my image that I'm going to use. Yeah, we'll see it when it gets bigger. Um, I call this class form properties demo dot cs because it's a C sharp source file. Then I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is using using uh, system then using System dot, uh, windows, and it doesn't make any difference what order you put. Although if you have a lot of using statements, it's nice to order them so they look kind of tidy. Using system dot drawing. Now the reason I need system dot drawing is because I'm using the color class. Okay. So then now I'm going to declare my class public class. Uh, form properties demo. Uh, extends, right? That's a colon. S extends form. Now, that's the end of my class. So usually I'll come down here and just make a comment. All 
like that, in class. Okay. Now, uh, since it's just a big main method, so public static void main, and I'm using the string argument array args like that. And this is the end of my main method. I go ahead and tag it like that. Okay, so the first thing I do is I'm going to create an instance of the form properties. Demo, right? So I need a, and I'm going to just call it FPD like I did in the text, equals new form properties demo. Now I've got my form. So the next thing I'm going to do is check and make sure, this is a little bit of defensive programming, right? So if args, right, uh, dot length is greater than, greater than zero, right? In other words, if I've got a string in there, it may be a bullshit string, right? It may not be a string worth a dang. It doesn't probably help me at all. But, you know, I want to say, hey, if... If that string is greater than one, that means something's in there. I'm going to see if it is a string to a file. Um, then try, right? Since I need to try catch. And what I do is I usually go ahead and put the catch clause, catch and exception, right? In this case, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and write. I'll change it up a little bit. Uh, I'll say uh, ex, right, for my parameter name. And I'll just write line console. EX. I'll write that um, I'll write that exception message out to the console so we can see what it looks like okay now if okay I got my uh, if statement here this is uh, now um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the else clause else and I'll come back to that okay so try what I'm gonna try well first thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to create the image right so I only need the image locally here image and then lowercase image equals new bitmap like that and then I'm going to give it the path to the file now locally if I'm just running this in a, in a directory right the, the the working directory for most programs is the is the directory from which the program is launched so uh, if my file image, if my image file is in that same directory, I can just give it a relative path name. And relatively speaking, from the location I'm at, the working directory, I just need to give it the name of the file, right? So let me go verify the name of the file. The name of the file in my form properties is wcc underscore 2.jpg. Okay, so new bitmap, and I'm going to say wcc uh, underscore wcc underscore two dot jpg let me make sure that was correct wcc underscore two dot jpg okay there we go so now semicolon so i've created my image now if that line of code executes then i can say um fpd right dot background this is where I always say if you ha if you're using Visual Studio, IntelliSense helps out a lot, right? Because it would auto-complete the background image and show you all the different properties. So set the background image to the image. Now I'm going to set the size. So FPD dot size equals image size. Okay. Now else, I can go up and choke up on this code here, so I don't need all that white space. So the else is belongs to the if. Let me clean up this piece like that. And let me just indent here a couple spaces, make that look a little bit nicer. All right. So hey, so else. In other words, if args greater than zero, then that means there's something in that string. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and set the background color to black. FPD dot um, back color like that equals color 
dot black. Okay. Now, the rest of the code, a couple more lines. Next thing I'm finally I'm going to say fpd fpd dot text right fpd dot text equals uh, form properties demo just like that that sets the title bar and then finally I'm going to run it. And I'm going to give it, so what, what this is expecting is a form. So FPD is a form. And so it'll just take that form. And what it does is it starts the event queue for that form. Save that code. And then we're going to compile it from the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and save it one more time. All right. Now, uh, minimize that window. And let's pull up. There we go. So let's change directories to the form properties demo. Okay. All right, so I'm in the form properties demo directory. Clear the screen and I'm gonna compile. CSC, uh, I'll just say star.cs. And that just compiles everything in there with this is only one thing. Well, let's just make sure, right? We're in the right directory. So we have form properties demo.cs source file. And then, so I'm going to compile csc star.cs. And it compiles fine. Uh, the name wcc 2 does underscore 2.jpg. Oh, hang on one second. Uh, here's what I did wrong. All right, so let's go back to the code. Yeah, I'm a chucklehead. This is a string, right? It's got to be a string. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do a string like this, right? That's a string. But but usually, uh, if you have paths, right? Uh, relative or absolute paths with slashes and stuff like that, or spaces, you really want to use a verbatim string. So a verbatim string, in this case, would be you add an ampersand signal to it. And that's a verbatim string. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use a verbatim string uh, in this case. Control save and let's compile it. Try that again. All right, so that that worked fine, and that was a uh, actually a good error. All right, so what I did wrong was I just typed it in right, and I forgot to put the quotes around it, and so I decided to go ahead and use a verbatim string. All right. Not necessary, like I said in this case, but it, it works. So now uh, let's do a dir again, and we can see that we got the executable file. So clear the screen, and we can run it. I'm going to say start uh, dot slash form properties demo, just like that, uh, and hit return, and we'll see. So I what I did here was I did not give it uh, a name of a file. So it came up with the black, right? I can minimize the console back here. So it came up with a black background. Okay, well, good. That's what we wanted, right? So it's got the and it's got the form properties demo text. So let's go ahead and run it again. But this time I'm going to give it a WCC. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to just name. Hang on one second. I don't want to just name this, right? I don't want to do that. I want to say args uh, zero. Well, I am really losing my mind today. All right, arg zero. Okay, that's going to be a string coming in from the arguments right here, right? If this is, uh, that's going to be a string, and that's fine. If that uh, throws an exception, then we should get the uh, catch, right? Print it out to the console. Control save. Now, let's compile this again. Oops, CD, I'm going to change to the directory. All right, so start. Let's bring this up a little bit. 
start dot backslash form properties demo okay uh, WCC underscore two dot JPG let's oh, actually let's do this so I'm using um, I'm using PowerShell. PowerShell doesn't usually look in the in the in its directory. So let's see if this works. There we go. All right. So there's the image. That's the form with the background image of the Canoe Club. Okay. Uh, WCC stands for Washington Canoe Club down on the Potomac at the foot of the Key Bridge. All right. Now this property uh, is set to. It looks like it's just tiling. Right, so the bigger the thing gets, it just tiles the images. All right, so you can actually set the different properties uh, on how the image is going to be displayed as the background. So I could set it to stretch. Um, there are different ways of, of doing that. Okay, but in this particular case, I set the image, I set the form background to the size of um, the, the image itself. So that's why it came up perfectly like that. Okay, so. That's a brief video on how to set a few of the form properties. Okay, so let's do a quick review of the code while we have it here. Okay, so once again, I am uh, creating a, a short little program called Form Properties Demo to demonstrate how to manipulate form properties. Uh, the three primary properties I'm talking about are the background image property, okay? Background image property, uh, the back color property, and the text property. The text property sets the title, uh, the Windows title bar, okay? Uh, we also use the size property, and we use the image size to set the background or the window size, okay, of, of the uh, form. So um, we have our class declaration, form properties demo, extends, that's this uh, colon there, extends form. We're using a main method to execute the code, and we're using the argument, string argument version of the main method. The first thing we do is we create an instance of the form properties class. And then we use a little bit of defensive programming to make sure that the, to check and see if uh, args is greater than one. Say, one of the reasons why I didn't put this uh, exception, okay, in, and I ignored it, is because if this is greater, if this is, if there's no string, and you, you just run it in the default mode, right, you're never going to execute this piece of code. So, um, however... Uh, there is a chance that if you did put in a, a mistake, right? So we can we can run that and see what would happen. If you typed in the name of the image that it couldn't find, then it would try to go find that image and it wouldn't be able to uh, to um, to create, right? In that case, you're not going to send. Now, what we might want to do is just to make sure, all right? If we do throw an exception, right? We really should probably put this uh, up here too. We should say FPD, FPD dot back color, right? Equals color dot black. That's one thing you could do. Control save. Or maybe a different color, right? Depending on what you're in the mood for. Let's go ahead and compile this again and see what the behavior might look like. So I'm going to go ahead and compile. CSC star dot CS. All right, so we compile it, clear the screen, and I'm say start. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a bogus name of an image. Okay, so just a random string. So it's going to try to execute that line of code, it's going to fail, and we get an exception, okay? And the exception is parameters not valid, argument exception, right? At system.drawing.string. Okay, so that's that makes sense. All right, and the background did get set to black. Now, if we just give it no string, 
in this case. Then, oops, it launched it way up here. Then we just get the black background uh, as expected. All right, and that's it. How to set Windows uh, prop form properties. And that as the lectures progress and we get more into doing things with uh, the form and graphical user interface programming, we'll be using properties more and more. You can actually uh, set events on the window. You can click on the window and have the, you know, uh, your window respond to events in addition to any other components that you put on your form. All right. So happy programming. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at rick at pulpfreepress.com. If you have special requests for video, uh, particularly hard topics you want me to make a special video on, just let me know. Rick at pulpfreepress.com. And once again, this material comes from my book, C Sharp for Artists. Let me give you a screenshot of the front cover. Alrighty. Let's come up here. C Sharp for Artists, 2nd Edition. A great book, if there ever was one. Uh, and anyway, I will see you next time. Have a good day.